So I'm going to start up a notepad file to write some new notes and I will give you these notes at the end of the day. Let me just set myself up here and then I'll remind you about how to set up the WordPress account and then we'll get into that to start to work with products and such. Okay, so to remind you uh, about the network folder, if you minimize all of the, the windows on screen at the moment and double click on computer at the top left. So double click computer at the top left, then you'll get a brand new screen here where in the section of network location down at the bottom here, uh, we have classroom data drive Z, Z is in zebra, so double click that one. You'll see a, a bunch of folders, and then it's all alphabetical. So our class is Campus WordPress. If you double click that one, though that folder has the notes that I wrote on Tuesday. If you didn't get a chance to get them on Tuesday, they're there. Uh, I have the printer off at the moment, so you won't be able to print that. But I, I wanted to remind you that the notes were over there from last time, and my email was right there. If you haven't done so yet, you can send me an email requesting the videos for, for the class. Uh, so you can review what we did on Tuesday, and then whatever we do today, you can review after the class is over. Because again, the class is only two days long. As for today, here are some of the goals that we have. So we'll say practice together creating a virtual WordPress site. Remember, you need either victorsbakery.com out in the real world, or you need a virtual version so you can practice. It's not out on the real internet, so no one can access it. And so I showed you a software last time that we will get back to together to do it again. Anyone remember the name of the software that I used when we, when we did this on Tuesday? Yes, WAMP, WAMP. Uh, there's MAMP for the Mac. There's WAMP for Windows. There's a bunch of them. So this will create a virtual uh, website for us to practice what we want to practice. Question. That's one of the downsides of doing it on a real website that, yes, it's live on the internet. So if you make changes on the version on the real internet, people would see it. So as a learning experience, it might still be useful to do this uh, offline so you know how it works and then you can do it online. Oops, map. So there's um, the version for Windows, is a version for, for Mac. Uh, although last time I, I, I learned that MAMP is now available for, for Windows as well. So either or will work. There's, there's a lot of other ones. There's another one that uh, ZAMP, they all stand for something. Don't worry what it stands for. But what they all do is a way for you to create a, a virtual WordPress account. So we'll do that together in a moment. So I want to do that and all of the steps that that entailed. I also want to uh, create simple products, create variable products and there's going to be details in there uh, the variable one is going to be very useful for many of us that have products that actually vary I sell a t-shirt that's in large medium and small those are variations they're variables or I sell cookies at one dozen two dozen or half a dozen those are, those are all variables, variations. So we'll talk about how to set that up. Simple product is then, as the name goes, a lot simpler than that. It's one product, one price, etc. Variables. Not everyone needs these, but if you know how to make this kind of product, it could be very useful for your business. We'll also talk about useful plugins. Uh, WordPress is built on a system that you can add to it. 
and we've worked with one plugin so far to add e-commerce features to WordPress. Anyone remember perhaps what was the plugin that I used to add e-commerce to to the site? No, WooCommerce. WooCommerce was the plugin that gave us the ability to do shipping and taxing and prices and such, but WooCommerce is the add-on software that we add on to WordPress to give it more features. So I'll cover other useful plugins as well. And then depending on our time, let's see what else we can, we can, uh, we can do. But let's uh, start the first task over here, which is to practice setting this up again. So in general, I have it on the other document, but I'll put it here in general. Download and install the uh, virtualization, the, the virtual WordPress software, which would be either WAMP or MAMP, ZAMP, whatever. I already have WAMP installed, so we don't have to do it here. But at your own computer, uh, at home, um, you would choose the one that you want there, download it, and install it. Okay, then download and install uh, WordPress software. So WAMP and MAMP and ZAMP and all of that is one thing to make a website. But then the kind of website that we're making is a WordPress website, so I have to download the WordPress software. That is also done for us here on these computers. At home, you would go to the WordPress site. Uh, anyone remember the name of the WordPress site to download the software? WordPress.org. .org, it's exactly. Sometimes people would say .com, but no, that's the place where you go, um, where you do other things. The .org is where you download the actual software. Good. Well, if I've got the virtual um, WordPress, if I've got WAMP running, and then I, I'm going to put WordPress on top of it, there's something in the middle. Uh, WordPress needs to be installed into or on top of something. Anyone remember what else, what other step was there in between these sorts of things? Uh, yes, the database. The database. So then uh, create a database to install WordPress into. And then, then you get a WordPress site. Now, I've simplified it a lot there, four steps, but we'll do them all together right now. And this should be a, uh, a little bit of a recap of what we did at the end of the day last time, but practice makes perfect. And again, a reason to do this on, on your own computer, on a virtual machine, uh, on a virtual server, is because then your website is not live and everyone is not seeing what, what you're doing. Okay, step one, we need to start the WAMP software. So on the desktop, we've got the WAMP server icon, remember this little purple W, double click it. Actually, it's more of a magenta, I guess. Double click WAMP server. And then if you see an icon appear at the bottom over here, it might be red for a moment, then orange, then green. If you don't see it, it might have just hidden itself in that little triangle. See, if you don't see anything there, it might be in the triangle. You should see the green WAMP. So we would say a real site is victorsbakery.com. Our virtual site is, does anyone remember what was the address we needed to access in the web browser to get to our virtual site? Localhost, Local yep. So let's do that right now. Let's go to your web browser and let's go to the address http colon slash slash localhost. Um, I would recommend to type the whole first part of it also because the web browser nowadays, Google Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, whatever, they assume you're going to go to a website on the internet. So if you just type Victor's Bakery, it will assume.com and type the rest for you, probably. Well, this is not on the real internet. So if you just type localhost, it may or may not take you to where we want to go. The web browser may think, okay, you want to go to localhost.com. No, we don't want to do that. We want to go to the local host in our computer here. So it's just safer to type this first HTTP colon slash slash part. Go ahead. Well, like I said, do you see on the bottom right corner a little uh, W? That's all you'll see. You won't see like a welcome message or anything like that. You're just going to see a little W in the corner, or it might be hidden inside the triangle. 
So now let's go to any web browser and we'll go to localhost. If you see this in localhost, you're in the right place. If you go to the address localhost and you see this kind of screen here, that's another confirmation that this is working. If you weren't actually properly using WAMP server, this would have said, you know, cannot be found. So if I do see WAMP server, I'm in the right place. Um, we've got our we've got our our WAMP server software running, and then we've got this sort of configuration screen. Okay, well, I had listed that. Uh, create a database to install WordPress into and on a technical level it's clicking on the icon there that says PHP my admin so do you see here uh, do you see here in this server configuration there's a tool here PHP my admin go ahead and click that one and that's where we're going to create the database So it says, welcome to PHP My Admin. This is the software we use to create the database. Uh, it's asking us to log in. Anyone remember what did we type in here when we wanted to log into My Admin here? Root. Root, good. And what's our password? Blank, nothing. Mm -hmm, that's right. So our login here, this is to access the database, which you only have to do once. On a future screen, when we create the account for WordPress, that's the one that's what you can set to whatever name you want, whatever password you want. But here, when we create the database in this step, it's root with no password. And I'll put it again in our notes. So uh, to get into PHP my admin to create the database. It's um, root, no password. OK, so if I type root and no password and I click go, I get to this main screen here. I need to create a new database. I'm in this screen here. I need to create a new database. At the top, we've got a button that says databases. You should see near the top over here, databases. Click on that. And then there's a box here. Let's create a database. We can call it whatever we want. Then we click the Create button. Last time we called it My Site. Uh, again, this can be called anything you want. Uh, but today, I'm, I feel like calling it WordPress. There's going to be a database called WordPress for my WordPress site. But this can be anything. It could be called, like, if this was Victor's Bakery, I can call it Victor's Bakery. The database where everything is stored into could be called Victor's Bakery. The catch is no spaces, no special characters. That'll cause some issues. So just to follow along at the moment, let's call it WordPress. And I'll click Create. So now on the left side, it shows here, I've created a new database called WordPress. I have WAMP server running. I have a database. Next step, I need to start to install WordPress. The WordPress software, I mean. So I'm going to minimize this window. And we'll open computer, computer window.
I've already downloaded the WordPress software to these computers, but we need to copy it to the right place so that then we can install the WordPress software into the database that we just created. So let's double click on local disk C on the hard drives over here, the main, the main hard drive, double click local disk C. If you scroll down alphabetically, you should see a folder called WordPress. That's where the WordPress software is. We're going to copy it, right click, right -click copy, and then we're going to paste it where I tell you in a moment. Go ahead and right click, and then copy. You want to go back uh, to the C drive, C as in cat, not Z as in zebra. So when you open computer window over here, you see local disk C. So let me just do one thing here, and I'll be there one moment. So after you um, after you copy it here, right click copy WordPress, we're going to open WAMP64 folder, and then we're going to open WW folder, WWW folder, and paste it. Copying the software to the right place. this point, um, I've copied the WordPress software into the right folder. Um, we'll go back to the web browser, and we're going to go to the address http colon slash slash localhost slash WordPress. We just copied the WordPress software into WAMP server. WAMP server basically also known as localhost. And then so we're going to go look at our WordPress site right here. Question? We wanted to get software from WordPress the yes. Um, over on the WordPress.org site, it should be, let's see, where do they have it at the moment? Right up here. Get WordPress at the top right corner. And then after that, it tells you download, download that first big download button. So yeah, there's a lot that you could look at at the WordPress.org site. 
and I guess it's not as big as they used to. I remember the button was bigger, but there it is. Get WordPress, and that'll give you the the latest version right there. Anyway, for us here, um, if you copied the WordPress uh, folder into the right place and you type the address localhost slash WordPress, it should then show you the WordPress installation screen right here. So we're about to install it. Uh, I'm going to select to install it in English, and I'll continue. This just tells you, okay, you're about to install WordPress. Make sure you have these items, which we should. So let's click Let's Go. And then here it's asking, what's the name of your database? What's the username to access the database? What's the password? Well, it's not that it knew that we called it WordPress. And it says, oh, your database must be WordPress. No, we, met, we happened to call it WordPress a moment ago. And this is going to look for a, a database called WordPress. Remember, on the first day, on Tuesday, we called it my site, the, the database. And so we have to type here my site. But today, we made a database called WordPress, so it's WordPress. And this is the same root, username, and no password. This is the same information we use to log into phpMyAdmin. We use that information to create the database, but WordPress needs it in order to connect to the database. And besides this, we don't need to change database host. What, what website is it on? Well, it's on localhost. We're not on a real website. And table prefix, don't worry about that. It's just saving data internally that way. So the only things you need to change here are what's the username and password. And if you made a different website, if you did it, if you made a different database name, if you made a database called Victor's Bakery, you would type the name of your database there. But we called it WordPress today. Let's click Submit. It, if there was an error, it would tell you there's an error on this screen. I didn't get an error, so I will click Run. I'll be there one moment. So go ahead and click Run. And then right here, we're going to fill in the information. Now, this is the information that you can fill in more correctly in terms of what's the name of the site you're about to work on, what username would you like to create to log in, what password, what email. And again, this is not on a real internet uh, server. So you can type in whatever you want. And I'm going to use admin and password as my admin and password, which is a terrible admin and password. But just for the purposes of the class, I would probably fill that in as, as what makes sense to you and then we can submit.
to fill in these items. Again, this is not a real website just yet, so this can be anything you want at the moment. And I'll click Install. And then log in. So I'm going to log in with the account I just created. And if you're able to see this dashboard, you, you're in the right place. And I'll make a couple more notes and then I'll do a little pause. So localhost slash uh, WordPress, what your visitors see, and then WordPress slash WP dash admin. screen. That also works when you have your real website. So if I've got victorsbakery.com, that's what my visitors see. And then when I want to log in to make changes, it's the name of the website slash wp-admin, just for your information. Okay, try to log in then. This address right here, your admin screen is this. Try that address. Now I'm going to pass out the sign in sheet. Please sign in on this uh, for our attendance. So please sign in legibly. Pass it on.
All right, so if we have up to this point, we have, we have a, a WordPress account now, um, so we can do the things that we want to do. Uh, just a little bit of um, also uh, technical aspect. When we're here in the dashboard, we, we're in this control panel where we can do a variety of things that only us, the owner of the website, can do. Well, sometimes we make changes on our website and we want to see what does it look like for the people visiting our site. One thing to get used to is at the very top left corner, if you put your mouse on top of the name of your site, you get a drop down menu that says visit site. So one thing to get used to is you're probably going to make changes in the dashboard here, which I often call the back end because there's back end, front end. You're often going to be here in the back end and then you want to click visit site to go look at it. Well, what does it actually look for like people? This is the front end. And if I want to go back to the back end, back to the dashboard, you hover your mouse again over the name of your uh, company, and you click Dashboard. So just get used to that, that you're going to jump back and forth between that sometimes to see the control panel area and then the main website. You can actually just click on the name of it too. See, I'm just clicking the name, and it goes to the back end, same button to the front end. And sometimes what I do is I might have like one, uh, you can do the right click and say open in a new window. And I can maybe have like, you know, because you've got nice, nice big monitors there, maybe you can have two monitors or two windows at the same time that you're in the dashboard making changes and then you're seeing the results on the front. Uh, but I'm just going to keep it simple with one thing at a time. So just get used to that going to the dashboard or going to the front end. Um, I want to create products, but I want to, since we have already looked a little bit at simple products last time, we'll create one simple product together briefly, uh, and then we'll focus a little bit more on the more complex variable products. So here in the dashboard, in the back end, I want to create a brand new product. Um, so what's step one to creating a new product? That's step zero, actually, yes. Before step one, I have a brand new WordPress account. I want to click new product. I don't see new product because it doesn't come with that feature yet. So some of these features beyond the basics of a website are these extra plugins. So let's go, let's back up and do that. We need to add the WooCommerce plugin to add the ability to do products. Let's hover your mouse over plugins, and we're going to add a new plugin. This is the first step zero before step one of working with products. I need to add the plugin to give WordPress the capability to work with products. So I'll say after you have a WordPress site in or set up, add the WooCommerce plugin. And that's going into the dashboard, plugins. Add new. Search WooCommerce. So in the dashboard here, hover your mouse over plugins and then click Add New in the search box. Let's search for the keyword WooCommerce. So plugins, add new. Search box, WooCommerce. One word. And even though I have six and a half thousand results, uh, there's only one that is the one I care about. All of these other ones are extra features as well, such as a more powerful invoice and packing slip system, or the German version, or what is this here? Terra Wallet, a powerful extendable wallet partial payments and so forth so there's all of these other extra more powerful review system there's all of these add-ons that we can add to the add-on WooCommerce is the add-on that we that we install into our WordPress to to give us the basic shopping cart capabilities which is still pretty advanced but then when we wanted to do even more there's other plugins that we un install on top of that that gives us more features for the moment we care about this one WooCommerce so you should see the button here to click install. If it doesn't look like mine, it's the wrong one. Make sure it says WooCommerce. Make sure it's by the company automatic. Make 
picture it says you know 3,000 reviews if it's anything besides that it might not be the right one so I want to click install now and whenever we deal with plugins there's two well kind of three steps one is find it step two is click install but then step three is activate it the the thing is that's very confusing for for beginners is that well yeah I just installed it I pressed the install button but it's actually not really running yet it's not really active it's just hanging around there but not doing anything because now the button has changed to activate so none of these over here are installed but this one is installed but it's not running so click activate and then I'll note right here select install wait it to download, click activate to get all the features. So nothing happens until you click the activate. And I'll do that if you haven't done so yet, click activate. And you might remember this from last time I walked through this through this system here, so it should not be completely new. Um, it should be pretty self-explanatory if I didn't uh, mention every single thing. But here, again, for our testing purposes, for educational purposes, this can be completely fake because it's not going to be on the real internet. And I'm going to fill out some of these items. So where is your store located? Probably the US. So I'll select that put some kind of address yes for the moment I'll make it fake because again it's just for educational purposes when I do this on a real website on the real internet eventually I will need to fill that out properly because I will want to get real customers and so forth so San Diego California 91919 currency um, dollars is good and for us, just to see everything that we could, we'll, I will leave this as, I plan to sell both physical and digital. If you want to change it to either one of those, that's fine. Uh, but some of us might sell physical versus digital. I, I'll leave it on both just to see more options. And uh, sure, I'll also turn on I'll sell services too. All of this can be changed after the fact. And whatever you set here informs what options you'll you'll see when you use WooCommerce. This tracking stuff, like I said, it doesn't matter if you leave it on or off. I would personally turn it off uh, simply because um, I, I don't I don't want to participate in their system of usage tracking it should not affect your site at all if you turn it off that's just a personal preference and click let's go yeah, that's going to depend on what country you chose if you've selected a country that it does not have states it won't have states now click let's go Oops. Uh, zip code Okay, so then we saw this section of payments. Just to keep it simple, activate PayPal. And then continue. All of this shipping stuff could be kind of complex. We'll just leave it as the defaults for the moment. I'm just leaving all the defaults and click continue. Oh, okay, uh, shipping method. So if we are doing a flat rate, um, we'll just leave the defaults, but we'll put some value. Let's say 5 and 10, 5 domestic, 10 international. These are probably wrong for your business, but depending on what your business is, you would change that, and we can do it later. And then continue.
Again, here it gives you some suggestions. Would you like to also add these features? A theme that is focused on a store? That sounds good. Uh, helping me with setting up taxa taxation? Sure. Uh, reaching people via newsletter or Facebook? Sure. And you can turn them all off or whichever one you, you want. I'll leave the defaults. And this can be changed later also. So we'll continue. I mentioned previously Jetpack. That was um, extra features to add to your site to give you more capabilities. And there's the button about learn more so I can see what I will get. However, it's going to be too much of a, of a, of a, side, of a side quest to go into here. Uh, so I'll get back to Jetpack later. So at the very bottom, in a little small link, it says skip this step. Okay, more stuff here. Would you like to join our newsletter? I'm just going to skip all of that for the moment. And at the very bottom, we have uh, we have a visit dashboard. We've gone through this wizard. We've set ourselves up the basic features of WooCommerce. I want to visit dashboard so I can actually start using it. All of that was was step zero. You needed to have WooCommerce installed. And yeah, it had a lot of sub steps. But then now we can do add a simple product, which has a title, description, picture, categories, tags, and uh, that's good for the moment. Okay, now we can do step one. Now we've got a WordPress site. Now we've got WooCommerce set up. There's still other features to look at, but we'll get there. Now we've got products menu item, which we did not have before, to add new. Let's hover over products and select add new. So we might be getting all of these messages. I'll, 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 co I'll cover them a little bit later so you don't have to close them. But if you scroll down, we keep seeing something about design your store. We'll look at that later. And then product name. OK, so just to practice this a little bit, let's say if you've got the site like me, Victor's Bakery, I'm going to put some bakery-related products. If you've got your own site, if you set it up how you wanted, that's fine. You make your own things that you want here. Let's say I'm going to sell here birthday cake. What color, what flavor, and all of that, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Let's say, um, to keep it really, really simple, let's do, it, let's do it as just birthday cake. We're going to sell a birthday cake generically for every child. You know, it, won't even have their, it won't even have their year, I mean their, their, their age. You know, they, they can put a little candle on it. Let's say birthday cake. And we then get this simple editor here where we can add a, a variety of description. And from this editor, we have a way to change a little bit of the styling of the text. We don't have a thousand fonts to work with. We have then, we can bold things, we can italicize bullet points, alignment, and so forth. And at the very end, we have an icon toolbar toggle where it gives you a few more, a few more features. Like if I want to strike through, if I want to change color, undo, redo, it's hidden under this t toolbar toggle for birthday cake. So we will say here, um, handmade with organic ingredients. With the following features bullet point um, round shape, three layers, pink frosting. I'm just putting stuff. It doesn't really matter what you put. I'm just showing you that you have this unlimited amount of space to 
describe your product and this is an area for you to write some content and I mentioned previously that the tip of the iceberg of the concept of SEO search engine optimization is to create content that has keywords so I teach this class here for North City Center for free and I also teach classes at Southwestern College and over there those are classes for for units for college credit and those classes are not free the classes that I do here at North City they're they're free and there's no homework or anything like that at Southwestern College they are paid classes and there is homework so I would be grading people on all the stuff that they're doing I would be grading a student on this in terms of is it written enough that it helps your SEO that it helps your ranking this right now might be a nice C grade medium because it has text it's it's a sentence it tells what, what it is but you have basically unlimited amount of space and it tells you down at the bottom I've written 14 words so far you have unlimited amount of space to write as much as you want full of paragraphs full of sentences full of keywords that can help you get found by Google by Yahoo Bing whatever search engine so for my notes I would say take advantage of your title your title is another place that you might not have thought of is where also keywords can exist take advantage of your title and description as a place as places to write detail focused on keywords for SEO which is search engine optimization purposes I'm not saying simply write a paragraph because I'm forcing you to I'm saying write enough text that makes sense that describes the product but also has keywords and there's a whole class that I teach on that so I can't get into a lot of detail about it but the big idea is to think about how is a person that you don't know how are they going to find your website they're gonna type some keywords affordable birthday cake so am I going to put those keywords somewhere in my description or in the title what are the keywords that people might be searching for to find your particular products your particular site and it's a whole art and science and magic of SEO and there's a whole other class for it but just think about it at, at least here question does it make a difference if you put it here or down lower in the product short description um, that's a good question because there are two in this particular theme there are two places where your text about your product go one is the main description and then further down a short description this particular theme this particular design shows a product that the, that the short description is first and then below that is the longer description other themes might show this longer description first and the short description not at all so visually um, it doesn't matter for the user where you put these keywords and for the search engines well the search engines are ultimately going to read or analyze your site based on the code so it doesn't matter to it too much they don't care where it is exactly they don't quite care where it is they just care that you have it that you have keywords and such so they don't quite care where where you have it exactly as long as you have it somewhere and so for us I would also recommend you have this long description and you can write a variation of what you wrote up there you can also write it here under the short description and depending on the theme depending on the design it may be visible first or second or not at all but the web browsers will still analyze it they will still see it so we'll say uh, write all of that recommendation write a good amount and I can't tell you what a good amount is write a good amount 
of content in the long description and also a variation in the short description. So the short description is down at the, uh, at the end of the screen. Uh, I would not copy and paste the same thing to, two of, to those two places. One is designed to be a shorter spot and one is designed to be longer. So can I say what I said above in a more concise way? You're going to have your keywords in a variety of, of ways. And that'll help you because the search engines will, one of the ways they analyze your site is to determine, well, what's your site about? I see this keyword. I see this keyword. Someone is searching for those keywords. Let's show your site for them because that's what they're searching for. On the right side, categories. I talked about organization. And last time, we created categories first and then products. I'm not saying we're doing it wrong today, but I said last time I would recommend to create categories first and then put products in them, but we can still create a product and a category at the same time. How do you think you create a brand new category this way? Well, look, there's a button that says Add a New Category. That's easy. So let's click Add a New Category. We name a category, and, and, and the category, the way we're organizing this thing, the thing that it is, it's a cake. So I probably want to put it into a brand new category called cakes. Question. You need to open your web browser again and go back to your uh, localhost slash WordPress slash WP dash admin. So I'll get back to you in one moment. Let me finish my thought here. So under our product categories, um, we're creating cakes. Click add new category. And now this product is under cakes. We can put things into more than one category. If you think this might work in more than one category, go ahead and do so. If not, this is just one way that our product is being organized. So over here, what we've got is the um, we're adding a brand new product, and um, this is going to be a simple product. We're going to put a price for it, and then we'll talk about the more complex ones in a moment, um, and we'll take a break soon. But I've got a category for this product, and I want to add a price, so let's add a price for this. I'll say, I don't know, $14. I don't know if that's a good price. We'll just put some amount, $14. So when we scroll down a little bit further, we have a spot here for product image. Um, I want to add a preview image for this product. I have a way to add images over here as well if I, if I say add media. But this won't be the preview thumbnail of the product. The preview thumbnail of the product happens down here. And I've got some sort of like sample images that we can borrow. They're not going to be related at all to these products, but again, it's just a testing account. So um, let's do it this, this way. Click on product image, set product image. It says, okay, um, 
if you had images already, they would be listed under Media Library. I don't have any images. So we have it here under Upload. See at the top left, we have Upload an Image or Select an, an Image that already exists. We have no images. I want to upload an image. So we'll click the Select button right here. And I've got a few images that we can play with on these computers. So click Select. On the left side, on this new window on the left side, you can click on Libraries. Pictures. So libraries, pictures, sample pictures. You can pick any one of these you want. None of these really make sense for our product, but I'm going to choose the koala picture. Click it and then uh, open it. There's these boxes to fill in. I'll, I'll come back to that. But let's just click Set Product Image on the bottom right corner. So now this particular product is going to have a preview thumbnail of this. The cool thing about WordPress is that it will resize your images to the proper size depending on the different screens that you're on. Um, so we just need to upload it properly. It goes over here. It goes over here. Short description, like I said, you should fill that in. I won't do anything just yet because I can go back and make changes. But after we've added some of these items, we've got a product name, some description, price, category, image. Now we will click Publish on the top right corner. If you scroll back up, Publish. And at the very top of our screen, we have View Product. Click on View Product. And so this particular product here, there's the name I type. There's its price. It has the built-in buy one or more. It's under the category of cakes. There's the image with its own built-in um, you know, viewer. This is a description that I wrote. It took me back to the front end. It took me to the how my site would look like for people. And I have I should have you should have your menu bar up here and we have a whole shop screen. Yes. So all this information that you see on the screen is Based on the design from, from uh, WooCommerce, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. WooCommerce suggested us to use a certain theme, and so now the design is, is that theme. So they take over WordPress? It takes over the website of what it looks like to people. If someone visits victorsbakery.com, this is what they would see. It doesn't take over all of WordPress because still in my dashboard, I still see my WordPress dashboard. How would this relate to uh, pages? This is a special kind of page that is a, that is a product. So be in the dashboard, it keeps them separate that you've got a screen for pages, you've got a screen for posts, and you've got a screen for products. Ultimately, they're all a screen on your website, but one is a kind of a product screen, one is a kind of a uh, post screen, and one is a kind of a, um, a page screen. Let's do one more thing here, then we'll take a break. If you click on Shop on the menu bar here, I've only got one product, but if I had more products, they would be listed here. I want to search or I want to filter, we'll get to that. We don't have enough product to actually do that with. But when you go over here to shop, I'm seeing that I'm in my shop screen, I've got one product, I can add it to the cart, I can 
click on it to see the details of it. Notice in the shop screen, this is like the preview. This is where all of the thumbnails of all of the products would be. So I have another one and another one in a grid. I can just quickly add or click on it to see the details. Clicking on it shows me the details, which is what we were looking at a moment ago, the description, and so forth. But if you created one, one product, that's good. We'll take our break. We'll create another, a couple of more simple products. Then we'll create some more complex products. We'll see about customizing it. We'll see about making more changes. But we're starting to work with this uh, WordPress uh, site, which has WooCommerce features. So it's about 7.10. We'll take a break until 7.20, and then we'll come back.